Okay. The engineering design discussion, though the uh, though the name is engineering design, rarely does anyone dares. Let me use the word to talk about design. For design is something which is too very individualistic and cannot be formalized into any theory. You can say what is the process to be followed, but how actually that activity of doing the design has to be done will never be discussed. So even in software design or in traditional design, the discussions end with the initial phase of designing. Bisan get the kon bani, ilandre chik magun kar kon bani. Ano on hardi the? Kusu irwa mani ge bisan ge yata ka kusu kanda ya ola koraga hamari the. Oh, er option. <coughs> you can switch on the fan, but I should not hear it in a two or three level is okay. Don't disturb. The point why design is never discussed is very obvious for everyone. Therefore, what every author does, they try to capture as much issues as possible. What issues should be considered by the designer while he designs? These issues should be taken care of. How do you take care of those issues? It's left to you. But these are the issues which should compulsorily be taken care of. And the issues list will be given. In traditional engineering, the issues which should be discussed in any design, irrespective of the product that you are designing, are mainly safety and reliability. Safety of the product and reliability of the system. These two are related concepts, but they are different. Safety is not reliability, though they are dependent on each other. A system which is safe cannot be said that it will be a reliable system or a reliable system need not be very safe. These two things are quite different from each other though they are related in a strange way. Let me tell you in the very beginning of my discussion that these discussions won't predominantly feature in software world. We don't know about safety for the simple reason that there are no components which undergo wear and tear in software. Physical components undergo wear and tear. Due to the usage, a component will become old, therefore, after a point of time, will not be safe to use. There is no such thing for software. Software does not become old, irrespective of how many times you use it. But there is one more point in software which is directly related to the safety aspects that is the requirement of the user to upgrade his system to meet newer needs nobody uses a particular kind of a software for 10 years in fact software becomes a, a kind of a uh, what should i say it loses its relevance quite fast than any other product because of various changes in hardware and the changes in the requirements. That way we can understand. I am not going into that deeply. But anyway, safety and reliability are the central aspects which you should consider while you design. Now see the context in which we are discussing. We started with PDS. We said that you have to embody your abstract ideas into some physical design that was discussed. 
that means you have to validate your design using some techniques all that is done now what is this detailed design when are we actually manufacturing if you note manufacturing actually does not come under our purview of discussion it's a separate topic in itself which we are not interested all of you should understand that the process that we are talking is highly iterative in nature it's not that you write the pds put it in the locker no more changes then start design design over lock it then optimize lock it then come to detail design no this is a highly iterative process in the sense that you write a rough pds go and do the design something is not favorable for you in the design go back to your pds see what was wrong correct in pds again come back do the design optimize do the detail design it's an iterative process because it's how we do things so in the traditional discussion when safety is discussed how do you decide or how do you calculate the safety of a product there is a simple answer they give the answer they give is the safety of the system depends on the components used in that product if the components used in the product have the ability to withstand the stress or any other factors the cyclic fatigue and other things the system will be safe so the system safety is directly proportional to the component design if you are choosing right components for your product your system should work fine the system the components used in the system should have the ability to withstand the stress traditionally all product designing undergo what we call a stress test i hope in the mechanical engineering course you are introduced to this utm universal testing machine which has the ability to do these kinds of stress testing load testing and all such tests if you want to have a look you can go to the mechanical and civil engineering labs they have this universal testing machine which is a bulky machine which can do these kinds of tests for various components in fact when they want to find out the correct composition of correct composition of cement and sand for building the buildings they do this kinds of tests not in a mood to stop well oh as with everyone ken hurst also focuses more on how do you find out whether a system is safe or not using the component based method i want to warn you that going through the text material of ken hurst in this particular chapter can be quite troublesome for you guys because that is filled with formulas and formulas let me assure you that you need not worry about all these things you need not worry there are few ideas which i will elaborate on which are relevant to software which you should be worrying on regarding component design so the aspect of safety engineering and other things you need not take it from kenhurst but from my lectures directly in software see take any generic engineering design the idea is that you get the component from somewhere put them together you make the product that's a general idea we say that as many standard components you use in your product that means as mature your product will be for example somebody who is manufacturing this fan cannot test each screw and each bolt nuts and bolts that will be too pathetic for him to test everything what does he do he goes to a reliable man who assures him of quality nuts bolts gets it packs everything together gives it to him that's the idea people have worried about this in software engineering from a long time whether can we do software design in the similar manner that is take one component from somewhere take one component somewhere put them together and make it work that's the idea because every engineering field works like that we take part 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 and assemble in fact this is the basic difference between 
what I call as organic design and human design. See plants and human bodies and all. Organic design which is found in nature. Nobody in nature, whoever he is, God or whoever, is the ultimate designer. He does not create parts and then assemble it together. Human creation, hand madu, tale madu, yalla haki sersu, very quick. Does not happen like that. Trees, nobody says build the leaves, build the branch and then fix them. Together. Does not happen so. Only humans have this tendency to build components and put them together. In nature, what you find is organic growth. Humans always are interested in component and assembly. Anyway, philosophy. In software, this idea started quite early that we should get components and then add them together to make a software. But let me tell you that we have not succeeded too much. For example, today if you if somebody asks you to write uh, a program, a software to create, to maintain the employee records of MSRIT or the details of the students in MSRIT, you will directly start coding. Meaning you will not think of whether some components are already available, can we make use of components and then extend it. These kind of ideas have not come into our industry still. People pride themselves with their ability to write every program on their own which is not the case in any engineering. They are very dependent on their data handbooks which gives them ready-made solutions for all the standard problems. We have not matured in that way. But anyway, if at all, if at all you are successful in taking on the components and putting them together and create a new software, there are two ideas which I want you to be very clear about. One is called cohesion and other is called coupling. See in design, whatever the design area may be, we always give guidelines. We always give guidelines. We say, you should do this. If possible, do this. Guideline. One of the most famous guidelines in software engineering is a KISS guideline. KISS. Keep it simple and straightforward. Where <laughs> Keep it simple and straightforward is a basic guideline in software engineering which is very very difficult to follow. It's very difficult to keep things simple. One more guideline which I want you to remember is relating to cohesion and coupling. The guideline is this. Let me first tell you the guideline and then elaborate on it. The guideline says that any system if it has multiple components, software components should aim for maximum cohesion and minimum coupling. Whenever you are designing a system, you should minimize the coupling and maximize the cohesion. Now what is cohesion and what is coupling? Let me elaborate. Supposedly there are components. Components for us are nothing but independent programs. Okay, Nothing great. Independent programs. Or inside a program you can consider them as sub programs or functions, procedures, what do you know? Functions, procedures, you know all that. So inside, whenever you, ah, this can, yeah, correct, correct. This can apply even for good program design. Good program design. How to design a good program? Maximum cohesion, minimum coupling. That is a guideline to be followed even for good programming. What is cohesion? If there is an independent component, this may be one function, or this may be one program, or this may be one software, whatever. Cohesion andre, the ability of a component to keep data for itself. Data should be, this component should be as independent as possible. Independent means, whatever happens within this component, the data required to do that operation should reside within this. For example, let me say that this component has the job of finding sum of two numbers. So, this component itself should have two data variables, which is the input, and it itself should have the place wherein it stores the resultant. This means this has maximum cohesion. 
whatever this needs requires the logic for finding the sum the input and the output i am simplifying huh? everything is within this component there is no data leakage this is a good design now your job is for example to find the average sorry the okay let, let us consider this you have to write a software to generate marks card of every student marks card of every student there is student details stored somewhere his marks are stored somewhere you have to generate the marks card for every student how will you design the software andre there is one component which i have designed what does this do finds the sum of two numbers improve upon this let me say that i have changed this component now this is very simple for us that it finds the sum of n numbers n numbers given n numbers this will return the value of n numbers now see where will the n numbers come from it should come from one other component this component i will say is the student detail student detail in this component what you are storing is the name and whatever blah 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 his semester and all fine you are you are deciding to create you have decided to create one more component which will have marks say cie marks it will contain usn subject name or subject code what is his cie marks one more component it will have sce marks it will have usn subject name or subject code and sce marks say you have created these many different 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 components the idea here is that each component should be highly cohesive in the sense that if you want to know the name of a student whose usn you already know you should ask this component and that component should return back in fact these ideas were later elaborated into object orientation principles and languages like c++ java c# c# hash and all support these ideas but i am not talking about object orientation per se i am talking about component based software design which is a larger idea now who understand the scenario the scenario is this system cannot work like this can it work like this no it should be connected like this to find the sum of all subjects of a student you have to first contact this object which will give you the cie marks you contact this component it will give you a c marks finally you find the sum and finally one more component which has the ability to print the marks card the way you want so it's a highly interconnected system as i keep saying it is impossible for us to do everything in one component it has the task should be divided but once you divide the task how strong this link should be is the question so the guideline says that as far as possible let the cohesion be high and the coupling coupling is the strength of what is the link between this component and this component that should be as minimal as possible so coupling should be low that is the amount of data which is shared between two components should be as small as possible they should not share huge amount of data as far as possible don't create a situation wherein one component can change other component that should be avoided they can talk to each other in a very very low level that is if you consider all the components as human beings then they should have a very small working relationship and not a very intense relationship among each other is a general guideline why is because we have to avoid what is normally called as ripple effect ripple effect is what happens if this component goes out tomorrow you have to change this component 
if this component is highly connected to everything and if it has an ability to change all these things the moment you change this you have to change everything it's a common sense thing that should be avoided therefore the design guideline is whenever you are talking about a system which has huge number of components as far as possible increase the cohesion and reduce the coupling this discussion requires elaborate uh, uh, expansion of ideas with examples i am not telling you all that i am just telling the core principle if we have to elaborate this idea a bit more and incorporate reliability ideas to it we will get an interesting scenario i hope all of you know that reliability is directly proportional to the rate of failure have you discussed reliability anywhere in your discussion reliability okay reliability probability all of you know what probability is reliability is usually expressed as a probability function for example when i when, how, how do we say that this product is very reliable than that we say that this product has a failure for probability which is the rate of failure the probability of rate of failure of this is 90 percent therefore it is 90 percent reliable that fan the reliability to failure is 80 percent so it's 80 percent reliable so reliability is the probability of failure right the general formula always given if it is a probability distribution function normal distribution normal distribution formula is normal distribution e to the power of minus lambda t rt function of time oh no forget it okay you need not worry you have to just know this formula then if you don't understand what it is let me simplify lambda in this context is a rate of failure rate of failure t is the time so if you know the rate of failure that is you know that this tube light on an average you calculate the data this tube light will go off in 5 hours if you know that data then if you want to find out the reliability of a product in one year so you want to find out how reliable the tube light will be for one year if you know that one tube light goes off in every 5 hours then you can use this formula lambda is rate of failure rate of failure is 5 hours time you have to find out for one year so how many hours you can directly apply this formula to find the reliability of any product or there is this idea of mean time to failure and mean time between failure mm, okay the ideas are this take a time graph take a time graph i will just mark the time when the system fails this time the system has failed we have repaired the system again here it has started working after some time again it has failed we have repaired again it has started working something like this again it has failed now mean time to failure is calculated as this is t1 from here it was operational here it failed right mean time to failure from here it started working here forget this time this is a time taken for repair so it started working again here it failed here it failed you calculate all these timings and then you find the average of it this is called as mean time to failure mean time to failure mttf in reliability engineering there is one more idea of mean time between failures between failures to calculate that you have to calculate between failure this is t1 for mtbf second time you have to start from here only here to point of next failure is t2 between failure you calculate the time between two consecutive failures find the average of it you will get what is called as mtbf mean time between failure so if you know mtbf that is mean time between failure which is represented usually using theta then you will get one more formula
forget about what they mean, how to derive and all, you just know the formulas. Theta here is mean time between failure. Either if you know the rate of failure or mean time between failure, you can find out the reliability. That much if you know is sufficient. Next idea in reliability is this. Okay, any system will not have only one component. It will have more than one component. 100 components, 500 components, it's very common. The reliability of the complete system will depend on reliability of each component. So, reliability of the system is reliability of is each individual components. Now, see the effect of this statement. If I have two components in my system, each has the reliability of say 0 0.99. There are two components in my system. Each component has the reliability of 0 0.99. Then what is the total reliability of my system? 99 into 99. 99 into 99. Calculator illa. I to 19th corner, 90. 90 becomes easy. 0 0.9 into 0 0.9 becomes. Therefore, what is the implication? You may have two products which are 90% reliable, but when they come together, you get a system which is 81% reliable. Are you understanding the point? That means something happens if when you are using components together which have high reliability rate, the reliability of system decreases. Why? Why? Because we have assumed serial connection between reliability. Serial connection. That means we have considered that if one component fails, the whole system fails. Anta. If this fails, this fails, this fails, this fails. That's what I was talking about. How to minimize this? To minimize this, you should have a system wherein you, you should have such a system. So, if C1 fails, its substitute component should be there, which should take over immediately. That means we are focusing on parallel design here, not serial connection. Parallel connection should be there. This is irrelevant. This component you may think is irrelevant, but for the sake of ultimately safe and reliable product, this kind of design is mandatory in many cases. How to calculate the reliability of such a design? It's very simple. Derivation, forget it. It becomes like this. If the design is like this, the final reliability of a system is 1 minus 1 minus reliability of first into 1 minus reliability of second component, etc. Now you can see if the components are 0 0.9, what will be the ultimate reliability of a system using this kind of a design. Okay. So, what I want you to finally remember in these topics are very few. One is that detailed design is quite iterative in nature and is not a linear process. It comes again and again. So, you are not saying that after optimization you are doing detailed design and then going somewhere. No, it is an iterative process one. Second, more, most part of the discussions in this particular topic assume that your system is made up of multiple components, multiple independent components which have their own reliability. So, one safety. Safety is directly dependent on the ability of each individual component to withstand the stress and other issues. Second, in software, the component based design takes a very different shape with the introduction of topics such as cohesion, coupling, etc. The guideline of which we have seen. Third, when a system is designed like this, you have to discuss about reliability. So, reliability is directly a function of the failure rate or the mean time between failures and when two or more components come together to form a system, the reliability decreases if it is a serial kind of design. Therefore, we have to parallelize the designs 
and then the reliability increases. If you know these many points, more than sufficient. I will discuss the other two aspects in this that is how to incorporate an amount of quality into the design in my next lecture.